Hey guys, good evening. Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm having a I'm really exhausted and tired tonight. It's just been a long day. Um, this lot, this learning, distance learning, however we're calling it, teaching online thing is uh, <clears throat> it's tough. It's not easy teaching from home and getting lessons ready and checking in and out with the students, answering questions, solving tech issues. There's a lot, a lot of components going on. That's my teacher perspective. I'm sure from the other perspective, for students, it's just equally as challenging. Getting online, tech issues as well, maybe not having access to a computer or sharing computers at home. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. So we're definitely going through some interesting times here. It's an experiment. Um, hope everybody is doing well and doing their best and staying grounded and centered during these uh, crazy times. So. Fortunately, I had a Michael's gift card. I was able to go to Michael's and get some art supplies. Um, for me, art and creativity is a way of grounding myself. And especially during times like this that are unpredictable, it's good to be grounded, right? Because if you can't keep yourself grounded, <clears throat> the world around you just goes nuts. So anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do some painting uh, over here on my canvas, my piece of watercolor paper. Don't know what I'm going to paint tonight. Just have the colors out. Um, so, yeah, so join me. We'll do some chatting. I'll be checking in with the messages. Feel free to leave comments. Share this with your friends. I'd like to have people watching. Get a little community going here. Just keep the creativity and positivity moving forward, right? we got to just pay it forward however we can, no matter how small your part is. Pay it forward, my friends. So with that, well, in the studio, I have a couple of guests. You can see them over here. We have my friend, Mr. Bob Ross, on the shelf. We have my other uh, friend down here, Mr. Jim Henson. And there's a guy over here hiding kind of in the corner, Mr. Rogers. So just uh, they're cool. I like, like having those guys around. They were childhood uh, you know, friends in my head growing up. I used to love them. I still love them. I was inspired by Mr. Rogers and Bob Ross and Jim Henson. I'm still inspired by them to this day. Um, so maybe we'll talk a little bit more about them as I'm painting over here. Anyway, please feel free to say hello. Leave comments, messages, thumbs up, all that fun stuff. Most importantly, share this, pay it forward. Hopefully we can just all chill out together tonight and relax. Um, I'm going to be listening to some music as I'm painting. It's got my ear pods, earbuds. I always call them the wrong thing. I think it's AirPods. But I'm at home. I can keep both in if I want while I'm working. Unlike school where you can only have one in. Right? Right, guys? Um, yeah, there you go. So let's go do some painting and see what uh, happens over here. Thanks for tuning in again. And thank you for the thumbs up. Before I go paint, let me see who is online here. I can check. I have my iPad over here. So pardon me. I'm not being rude and looking away from the computer on purpose. Just trying to see who's online here. I could log into Facebook on my iPad. Anyway, how's your day going? How are you guys doing? Everybody doing okay? I know the supermarkets are bare, and it's. I was uh, in the mall area today. It was looks like a ghost town over there. It was really creepy. But ah, there we go. I can see. I'm on Facebook. Yes. I want to hear myself talking on Facebook. All right, so hello, everybody. I see Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Yeah, Bob Ross is in the house. Happy little trees. Well, amigo, nice to see you. Uh, Victoria, how are you? Wow, thanks for tuning in. Hope everything's well with you. I loved your post the other day about um, all the fun you guys are having at your house storm. This, uh, what are we going to call these times? I'm going to call it, let's see. I don't know, it's just good downtime, right? I know it's still crazy and hectic at home, but we got to make the best of it. So you guys and your family and your household, so your kids are having fun, you guys are definitely making the best of it. And that's awesome. Kudos to you. So thanks for tuning in. We're going to get over here to the canvas. I keep saying canvas, watercolor paper, whatever, right? It's just a word. So let's get over there and do some painting. So you can see I have my blank canvas over there. Um, I think I have, I have some watercolors and acrylic inks I'm going to work with tonight. And let's get to it.
I'm feeling very blue. Well, not literally blue, but I have a some cerulean blue acrylic ink. I feel like throwing some of this down on the paper. So let's throw it down. So share some ideas. What are you guys doing in your households? Uh, or personally, what are you doing to kind of get centered? What's your creative outlet? You know, or is it uh, exercise? I mean, what is what brings you to a state of Zen where you can focus, regain yourself, and move forward? I'd love to know if you have any suggestions. We go. I'm just going with the flow tonight as always. I have nothing's pre-planned. I just feel like bringing some color and getting it on paper here. The house is rather dry. Not a lot of humidity in here. So I'm adding some water to the canvas before I add the ink just so it covers the paper a little bit better. So I was mentioning my friends over there before, Mr. Uh, Bob Ross and Jim Henson and Mr. Rogers. Just watched that movie the other night with, uh, with Tom Hanks, the one about Mr. Rogers. Uh, it was a very slow moving movie, but I enjoyed it. You know, I kind of like the message. Um, you know, Mr. Rogers was a real interesting man and very caring and compassionate man. And, um, you know, in the movie kind of showed a glimpse that he was just normal like everybody else where he was not always happy in a state of well-being. I remember a scene where I think he was talking or something and at the end of the scene he went over to his piano and started banging on the keys um, in kind of an angry way so I'm thinking that he would use his music his piano music as a way to express himself and his feelings also um, he would use his puppets right he uses puppets to kind of talk for him and kind of project some of his emotions so I thought that was a pretty interesting take or observation uh, from the movie Right? Nobody's perfect, and we're all in this together. So why can't we help each other, right? It's kind of a no-brainer. There we go, so I got some blue on there. I'm going to let it dry for a second. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to adjust the lighting. It's a little too bright, I think. Let's see if this helps. Where's my lighting director, Mr. Bonito? Where are you? I need some lighting tips. All right, there we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Actually, so I know what color I want to use next. It just popped into my head. Let me just see if I have it over here. And I don't care if I don't cover this evenly, that's fine. Sometimes I want a little variation on the paper. Keep things a little more interesting. So let me see if I have that other color over here. I do. Yes. So I have, um, it's called red oxide. It's almost, oxide's what, rust? So it's kind of a rusty color. One of my favorite color combinations is blue and rust together. Um, I'm not sure what it is that I like about it. It might be architecturally, architecturally related. Let's see, I can't say it, but can I spell that? 
A R C H I T E C T U R A L L Y, architecturally. I think I got it. You know, um, in architecture, I often think of uh, metal. Metal structures tend to rust over time, and they develop what's called a, um, a patina. Sometimes it's a rust, rusty kind of color, a bluish, orangish color. So I'm feeling a little rusty. Might be my old age. I don't know. Just kidding. So let me see. So in case you haven't watched before and this is your first time, I like to use these Pringle containers to pour my paints in. They're a, it's a real good environmentally conscious, so you know, reuse of something. It's very sustainable. I have sustainability on my brain as a uh, something I'm kind of teaching now in my classes. And I think it's just something we all could live, live by and benefit from. So what I want to do is I'm going to add some of this rust color to the canvas while it's wet and see what kind of colors happen when uh, they merge together. Let's see. Let's put some water on my brush here. And I like to do this drip technique. I love the interesting patterns it creates and when it dries it creates even more, a little more interesting details going on. Oh, this looks great. I'm not sure it's showing up on camera, but in person, I really kind of loving this contrast here. Since I'm using a wet on wet technique or I'm putting wet paint over wet paint, you get kind of a, um, a bleeding effect on the edges here. I'll bring the camera up, we'll give you a close up in a minute. It's uh, interesting. What I'll do is after it dries, I'll come back and I'll probably add more. Rust over the blue. I may come back and add some more blue on it. I'm not sure yet. Let me uh, do a little close up of the detail so you can see what I'm talking about. I hope you don't have a uh, motion sickness. I'm going to move the camera. Here we go. Let's get a little close. Whoa. Let's see how close I can get. Um, I don't know if you could see it kind of the bleeding effect where the wet paint is on the wet paint. Some areas in here, you can definitely see it happening in this area right here. I'll definitely post some pictures later on of, of this, um, just to give a little close up of what's going on. So I was working on a painting yesterday, or two nights ago. Um, it's actually the one back here. This painting back here. And so I had painted it, it was actually yellow background, some red, and then what's appearing as green was actually blue. Um, and I liked it blue, and then I kind of did something I maybe shouldn't have, but I learned, is after it was dried, I went back over it with yellow paint. And what happens when you put yellow over blue? It makes green. So what happened is all my blue is now green. It still looks pretty cool. But the blue really popped out more, um, had much more of a contrast on it. But you know, it's a learning experience. It's again, this is just being creative, trying different things, right? Thinking outside the box a little bit. I'm not creating this for any specific purpose right now, other than just to have some creative time going on. I 
I've just taken a very light brush stroke down here. You can kind of see the striations of the brush, the bristles of the brush in here. It's ever so lightly dragging the paint down. I'm kind of liking this. I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to let it dry before I add anything else to it. I don't want it to get too mucky looking. Um, so down here, this is actually a scrap piece of paper. I always have one when I'm painting down here underneath the canvas. It helps to catch some of the paints uh, that drips. I also dry my brush off on it. And at the end of the day, it kind of becomes a cool little art piece unto itself, right? So it's just another idea of how to uh, repurpose or reuse things. So this is actually looking pretty cool. Sometimes these little scrap pieces of paper end up to be more dynamic and more interesting than the big paintings. So as you're looking at this, do you have any suggestions of maybe some, maybe one color I can add to this? Um, maybe something that's vibrant or bright that pops out a little bit. You know, we have kind of, you know, very dark tones going on up in here. So while well, think about it, if you have any suggestions, put them in, put in the chat box. I'd like to know what you're thinking. I'm going to clean these brushes off. Let this dry for a minute and check uh, the Facebook stream. Well, now I see uh, Grace was watching or is watching. And Mr. B, I see you're watching or you were watching. That's awesome. Thanks for watching and tuning in. I always appreciate the good comments. Mr. B, if you have any advice for lighting, I could use it. Um, your expertise is always appreciated. You are a master in what you do. So your feedback is awesome. But uh, yeah, so thanks for your support, guys. I hope you're all doing well with your families. You're hanging in there. We're you're taking this all one day at a time. It's not always easy, but just try to be the best you can, right? So that's still drying over here. So I'm just going to come back on camera for a minute. While that's paint drying, I'll chat over here. So, um, Let's, let's see, let's go back to my shelf over here. So let's talk about this guy for a minute. <laughs> you know who this is? Mr. Jim Henson, and he's holding Kermit. So, Jim Henson, um, I've always found very inspirational on many different levels, um, especially for his creativity. You know, he created the characters, the Muppet characters, from, from sketches, from his imagination. Um, pretty cool, right? I mean, he created this entire empire that's still going today based on simple doodles and drawings. Um, he was just sketching, getting stuff out of his head and onto paper, which is something we always talk about doing. Um, whether it's writing stuff down or drawing, just getting stuff out of here and putting it down is really helpful. So, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Jim Henson, his early sketches. I have a couple books showing his drawings. And, you know, they're very loose caricatures. Um, I think one of the earliest creations of his was the dog, Rolf. Um, not Rolf as in Mr. Warnicky. Oh, Mr. Warnicky. Um, a different Rolf. This one's more furrier. But anyway, I think he was developed, Rolf was used... Um, on a morning show maybe, or in, also in commercials, and one of his early characters. Kind of a similar thing between Mr. Rogers and Jim Henson. You know, well actually maybe you guys, can you tell me something that was similar about them both? Maybe something they both did or used? Puppets, right? They both used puppets. Um, 
It's interesting now to think about it. I mean, sometimes, it's weird, sometimes I think people or even adults can relate better to a talking frog than a talking person. Maybe because it's something cute to look at, so you pay more attention attention to it and listen to what, you know, it's saying. Um, but if you think about it, right, it's interesting how puppets were used or have been used to communicate things, communicate ideas, to establish connections. Um, you know, puppets for Jim Henson were originally, I think, I don't know if they were originally used on television shows or not for kids, but I mean, definitely in commercials for adults. Um, Mr. Rogers' TV show is, you think it's really geared towards children, his focus was children, but the message is universal. His message is applied to, to kids and adults alike, right? There are so many famous quotes and sayings that he has. Um, you know, just Google Mr. Rogers' quotes and you'll see what I'm talking about. Pretty amazing stuff. So, it's kind of interesting. As I'm talking, I'm kind of uh, going down memory lane a little bit. Which is cool. I mean, I can't really bother that. I mean, this guy is just obvious why he's so inspirational. It's the hair, you see? Speaking of hair, my hair is pretty bad. Um, it's okay. The hair person is not working today. So, um, there you go. Let's go back to the canvas and add some more color. I'm going to do some old school drawing right now, just looking for a, uh, something I could fan this with. You know, how about some coupons from ShopRite? Who says painting can't be exercise at the same time? Haha, -ha, I proved that wrong. I'm definitely getting exercise painting. See? I think I'm going to use some uh, acrylic paint right now. I was using acrylic ink before, which could be more transparent than acrylic ink. And I feel like I want to put some kind of a yellow on here. And I'm feeling kind of splotchy or polka dotty or something like that. And I think I want to put some yellow dots on here. Just, just going with it. Just go in with the gut. All right, let me grab some yellow paint. Let's see, I have a couple. Let's see, I might go with actually I have cadmium yellow and I have cadmium yellow deep hue. I think I'm going to use this one here, cadmium yellow deep hue. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, it was a bad joke. I'm also going to get a circle template. And if you don't know what a circle template is, I bet you can't wait to find out. I'm just going to grab one. So one of my drawers over here in the cabinet. Maybe I'll label my drawers this week. That one didn't open so good. Hmm. I'm going to of my drawers here. So you say, what is a circle template? This is a circle template. Basically, it's a piece of plastic with different holes or circle shapes cut out. 
It's actually used for drawing or architectural drafting. You can trace the outline of the circle. Um, in this case, I'm going to use it as a template and just paint, paint over it. I'm not looking for perfect circles, but something close would do. Well, let's see. Let's get a brush over here. Let's see. I'm just going to do, just randomly pick some out. Sometimes I add a little bit of white to this yellow. See, I have the yellow on the brush right now. I'm going to add some white to it just to brighten it up, freshen it up a little bit. Should have white in the corner here. I uh, hope so. I'm going to add some titanium and white to it. Again, I'm adding white just to brighten it up. Here's my palette. So this is where I'm using, this is where I put the yellow and white paint right in here. All right. Let's just give it a try and see what happens. Okay, I'm not looking for perfect circles. I just want to just randomly put some on here. We'll see what happens. Again, this is about just trying things. There we go. I need a paper towel. I just want to kind of wipe off the back before I put it on the paper. Yeah, let's try another one. There you go, it's looking pretty cool. Just wiping off the back of the template again. Ooh, I just actually had an idea. Let's try it after I do the next paint. I'm gonna put some more white in the palette here. I definitely like the white and the yellow together. It brightens it up a little bit. Let's see. Oh, so I got some paint on there on the, from the back side of this. That's okay. It's actually creating a little ridge in the corner, which is neat. It'll have a little 3D or, um, or depth to it. So let's just do, let's see, I don't know. I'm not gonna clean the back off this time. Intentionally, I'm gonna get some other yellow paint randomly on the paint paper here. I think I want some smaller ones maybe here.
Just looking for some smaller circles. So I still have some paint on the back of the template. I didn't clean it all off. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna push it against the canvas and see what comes out. I'm not sure what kind of shapes or patterns, but let's just kind of push this on here and let it do its thing. All right, I don't know if anything will come out on it. Again, this is all about just letting creativity out, experimenting, trying different things, having fun, you know? I think in my brain, you know, what would Bob Ross do? He was more controlled with his paintings, right? You knew he was going for a certain image. Um, but he would let the magic sometimes happen. The colors kind of do their thing, do their own little dance, right? So you can kind of see just pushing the temple on here, I got some random patterns. Um, I'm going to do it again. Let me just spin it around so it looks a little different. Paper is still a little wet, so it's buckling up in here. It's a little bumpy. All good though. All right, let's see if I take that off. See if any came off. Yeah, so I got some more random patterns going on there. I really am liking how this yellow is popping against the dark rust color in the background. I'm loving the blue. Um, I think I'm going to come back and put some more blue on it when it's dry to brighten it up. Not bright enough to do a what's the word? Brighten, add to it, build it up. Fill in the blank for me. I can't think of the word. Um, so you can see my template needs a little bit of cleaning. This is a great tool to have around. It's fun, convenient. At least for me it's convenient, right? Because I have it here from, this is actually back from my architecture school days. I used to use it all the time. So I'm glad I hung on to it after, after all these years. It's coming back for a different purpose. It's all good. So I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes. And then um, let's see. Come back, maybe hit some, hit some more blue on the canvas. I'm going to check it over on Facebook, see what's going on over there, see if anybody's any questions or comments. Let this dry for a minute. And uh, actually, let me do a little close up before I do that. Fast new seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Here we go. Taking off. I haven't mastered piloting the camera here. Of course, you might cord that's connected to the computer can't go that far. This is as close as I can get with it. Maybe you can see a little bit closer detail of what's going on. Up here, it's hard to see. I'll take pictures later. Um, around this edge of the circles, here, here, here. Wait, let's count. Like Sesame Street. How many circles do we have? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So around those seven circles, <coughs> there's a ridge from the paint. Um, when I was brushing, I was brushing diagonally over the template and all the paint collected on the one end of it. So it left a ridge around there. It's a neat little detail. Um, texture is a good thing. Hey, I'm back on camera. Hey guys. We had a little I don't know what happened, right? I think I took the cord out of here by mistake. Let's try it again. Hmm. The camera over there seems to have stopped functioning. That's really weird. Technical glitches. I think maybe I pulled the USB cable off by mistake. So pardon my uh, groaning as I'm on tech duty over here. Got my face in the camera. Let's see. And again. I have a Mac and all the ports are on the back of the screen here. Sometimes it's a pain in the neck to find it. There we go. All right, let's see if that works. Yes, I just had to reset it. See? 
even I have technical difficulties. It's all part of the technology, right? Very cool. So we check in. Let's check in on the message board over here. I'm gonna look down on the screen. I still I, I see someone still in the house watching. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hi, Susie. How are you? Oh, look. Hi, Grace and Maxine are saying hello to each other. I know they know each other. That's cool. Haven't seen you guys. Hello, Maxine. How are you? What else do I have here? Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it's so nice. Uh, it's nice to see some people watching out there. I appreciate it. Appreciate the hearts and the thumbs up. That's always fun. Feel free to share this broadcast with other people. I'll be on probably for another 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, yeah, and share the, share the love, right? That's always a good thing. So while that's drying, I'm going to go back to the canvas and I'm going to get some more of that blue acrylic ink and we'll uh, <coughs> add some more blue to the canvas. And I'm going to drink of water too. My throat's really dry. So if you have any questions or comments or want to say hello to anybody, just pop it in the chat box. Get some words of positivity on there. It's all good. It all helps, right? Let's see. I'm also actually going, I'm on Spotify. I'm trying to find some more music on. There you go. I love painting with music. It just adds to the entire atmosphere. Okay, I needed that trick of water. There we go. All right, let's get some more blue out of here. If you were to add one more color to this, what color would you add? Any? Would you add any color? I'm thinking three is enough, but. Could always add another color, right? Oops, this ink bottle is empty. Let me see, it's, hopefully I got another one here. I do, I do. So I just put some more blue acrylic ink in my Pringles cup. This would be an interesting color for a Pringle, don't you think? I'm gonna get a brush. Let's see, I'm gonna use this, I think I'm gonna use this brush. Just gonna get a paper towel. you've all been waiting for, I don't know, Just adding some more blue in here. It's going to help the rust color pop out a little bit more. I love acrylic ink. I just, it's so fluid. It's easy to move around. I love to draw with it. I love painting with it. And it smells good too. I'm just kidding. 
It's kind of stinky. That's okay. It's amazing. You can create beautiful things with stinky things sometimes, right? What's that expression about making lemonade out of lemons or something? Sometimes I'll see things emerging out of the painting as I'm working on them, some kind of shapes or forms. I'm not seeing anything with this one, and that's okay. I can come back another day and look at it, maybe see some forms. And I'm not, that's not my end goal is to come up with some kind of forms in it, but it's just a fun exercise. You know, you're looking at a painting and you're like, oh wow, I see this, or I see that. It's uh, it's good for your mind. It's good for your uh, brain. You know, like doing a puzzle book or crossword. It works your brain in a different way. Here we go. Yeah, the blue is actually, it's been popping it out so much more. Cool. I'm glad I added that. I might add some more later on as well. I kind of want to do a little, well, instead of talking about it, I'm just going to do it. I want to do a little bit of splattering on here. So when I splatter paint, I'll tend to add some more water into it to make it thinner. So I have some extra water and I'm just going to do a, just load the paintbrush up, let it soak in there for a second. And I'm just going to do the old flicking technique and see what happens. Ready? Well, these is fun to do. It's actually looking kind of cool. This has a, um, it's starting to look in, look very sci-fi-ish to me, this painting. There's a lot of artwork that's, um, I think it's like retro artwork. I can't think of any particular artists or illustrators, but it has a certain sci-fi look to it back from like the fifties, kind of retro. I really like those those kinds of art pieces. Not that this is anything close to that, but it has this. It does have a sci-fi vibe to it. And what I'd like to do now is also now that I got some blues splattered on here. See how fun this is. You get to get paint on yourself. I love it. Very cool. I almost like to do the opposite now and splatter a yellowish color on here. Acrylic, acrylic paint, I don't always have the best luck trying to splatter it. I usually use the ink to do that. <coughs> so I'm not going to do that right now. I do have some paint thinner somewhere on my shelf. It's looking cool. Let's see if we can get a little close-up of it for you.
If you look in the upper left, you, you can really see the splattering effect there. Right in this area. Let me see if I can hold this a point at the same time. Kind of in this area here. It's very splattery. But it's a controlled splatter. It's not a Jackson Pollock splatter. If I was to do something like that, I would have to put a poncho on. And I don't have any ponchos here at the moment. So we're going to con control it a little bit. I don't know, can you guys, can you sign, kind of see this sci-fi? I'm almost seeing, you know, um, I don't know, maybe it's my designer architect brain, but I always see buildings. You know, maybe some kind of futuristic, funky buildings rising up against a rust-colored background, some kind of a solar system or moons popping out in the background. I mean, it's kind of where my brain's going with this. What are you seeing right now? Where are your brains going? Now we can do the old trick that I love to do is flipping the painting upside down, get a different perspective on it. So let's do that and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so we're in flip mode here, flipping it over. And it's, all, it's always fun to look at paintings from a different perspective, right? Um, you know, kind of like looking at life from a different perspective. Sometimes a fresh pair of eyes and fresh insight into a situation can be the most rewarding or one of the best things you can do just stepping away and coming back to it kind of reframing your viewpoint um, you'll see different challenges you'll see different challenges and different solutions to challenges it's uh, it's interesting so by flipping this painting upside down you know now I'm seeing something totally different I'm seeing some kind of murky water maybe some kind of vegetation or something rising from the bottom of the sea rising up, you know, maybe some kind of funky abstract jellyfish or creatures in here swimming around. So just by flipping the painting 180 degrees, you know, we went from a, my brain went from a sci-fi futuristic city scape kind of scene to a now underwater type of scene. So it's interesting. I mean, we could also, I don't know, I mean, do you see what I'm, do you see what I'm seeing there? That could be crazy. Nah, that's the beauty of this stuff is everybody sees something different, right? So it makes it fun. That's why I like abstract painting. So I flip it sideways. Right, so it's a whole other different viewpoint. I think, I'm not sure which way it's going to end up going, but I'm going to flip it back to its original orientation there. Looking pretty cool. So if any questions or comments, let me know. I'm here for you. Grace, that's so funny. Can I see it sideways? Yeah, I just saw your comment and I put it sideways. Let me do it sideways again, and I'm going to flip it to the other side as well. Let's see. Hopefully it's showing up on camera. Right, and then let's flip that 180. Right, and here's another way. So I'd, I'd love to know if you guys have any preferences of which orientation you like the best. Interesting, actually, this one, if I hold it here, what does it look like in this position? I don't know, this position to me, I don't know, it's almost, I can almost see some kind of water lines or water wave lines here. Maybe some kind of reflecting, something orange or rusty reflecting on waves of water. 
It's interesting, right? I'm going to flip it back. The other thing that helps too is um, I'm looking at it really close. Sometimes standing far away and taking a look at it, you know, getting to see the bigger picture, you'll also see different things or notice things. Or stepping away and coming back, you'll see different things. So pretty cool. So I think, uh, let's see, it's 1034. I'm probably going to wrap it up in about 10 more minutes because I want it to dry before I start doing a lot of other stuff to it. So I'm going to bring over the painting I did the other day. Just hold them next to each other. Just as an interesting experiment to see how uh, your brain can change from one day to the next. Let's see. So this is the one I did the other day. Let's see if I can get them both on camera somehow. Part of my back. So it's tape on it. So this was this is one I had worked on a couple days ago here on Facebook. Two <coughs> excuse me, very different kinds of paintings, right? Especially with the colors. I was feeling very vibrant and bright the other night, and tonight not so much. I didn't pre-choose at either of these paintings or the colors. I just kind of went with that, what I was feeling. Um, it's here I think I was talking about spring and the colors and the flowers coming out bright and vibrant And here today, um, I don't know, maybe I was on Facebook a little too much today and seeing what people are saying on there about the coronavirus and all that stuff and uh, Maybe it got my brain into a different Perspective, right? Maybe a little bit more uh, I don't want to say depressing, but a little bit more just sullen, you know compared to the vibrancy of the other day so it's really interesting. It, to me, it's showing me how the media can really affect our thinking and perspective on things. This day, I, pretty, I didn't have much Facebook at all in the viewing time, and today I was looking at it a little bit more than usual, uh, which I'm not going to be doing anymore. And you can see the contrast. So I think definitely, um, you know, things that we do out throughout the day or see throughout the day affect us in ways we don't even know about. So it's a pretty interesting comparison there, right? I like them both. They're both equally great forms of expression and just getting ideas out and getting things out. Um, that's why it's good to have some kind of creative outlets, you know, whether it's it's a drawing, painting, singing, music. Maybe it's exercise, running for some people, um, reading. Just something to get, you know, step out of yourself for a little bit. Very cool. That's an interesting experiment. Just take this up. Alright, let's see what you guys are saying on the, the book, Facebook. Grace says, I see a fragmented boat or a piece of wood. Rigid. Interesting. Fragmented boat or a piece of wood. Grace, was that when I was holding it I don't know, this way or the other way? That's cool. I kind of like what you're seeing. I think it's incredible and I think it's awesome that you're actually seeing really, really cool things out of this. That's so much fun. Awesome. That makes me happy. But more importantly, I hope it makes you happy. You know, it shows that you're creative and you can think outside of the box by seeing these different things. So kudos to you for that, for sure. So it was this, so it was this way, right? Actually, I'm going to set it down on the easel. I just move the camera down a little bit. There we go. Cool. Now I can kind of step back and take a look at it with you.
Let's see. <coughs> yes, bubbles on the right. Boat slash wood is blue. Brown is rust on the boat. Ah, very cool. I'm actually starting to see it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. What a cool perspective. Very, very awesome. Grace, do you think there are, would you add any other colors to this? Just curious. I had, I had a color pop into my brain, but I'd like to know what, what you think. I kind of, I'm digging this orientation of it as well. <coughs> Interesting. I think I'm going to add some more bubbles to it. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush to thin out my acrylic paint. Let's add some more of these shapes. Sometimes I like to paint things going off the page. Kind of um, allows you to continue the story of the painting. Whatever your story might be, it allows you to continue it beyond the actual image. You know, beyond the actual paper. Actually, there's actually some blue ink mixed in with this, I have blue ink on the back of this template. Oops. Yeah, you know, I was actually thinking of uh, something more rusty or orangey as well. That's a great idea, and that's exactly where my brain was going. <coughs> or a fish, yes, a fish would be cool. Black would make for a good hole in the boat. That is true also. Really, really good suggestions. I like them all. I kind of, I think I was going with a rusty orangey color as well. Let me see if I have any orange here. Oh, I have red orange. That could work. Let's try it. Let's give it a shot.
I'm gonna put some paint on it. I'm gonna come back with a very dry brush and just go over it very lightly just to spread it out and add some texture to it. So I'm gonna get a, let me find a really dry brush over here. Take this big brush, it's very dry, and I'm just gonna go back. Just really lightly go over the top of this. So this orange color is coming up really bright on the camera, but in person it's not as bright as you're probably seeing on your end. Um, it's looking much better in person, I think. Very cool, so we'll let that dry a little bit. It's looking interesting for sure. Let's go back and try our experiment where we flip it. So this was the original way I think I had it, right? Cool, very interesting. So I think we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up in a minute. Over here and let this dry overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and I'll add one more layer of, of interest to it. I don't know what yet. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how it turns out. It's definitely abstract, um, looking kind of funky. But hey, guess what? I turned it again. That's so funny. So there you go. It's looking cool. So we're going to leave it at that for tonight. Um, so I want to say thank you for tuning in. Grace, I know you've been watching a long time, so I thank you. I always appreciate that very much. I even appreciate your comments even more, so thank you for doing that. Uh, thank you for giving me a thumbs up. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Who's in the room? I know Grace was in here. Someone just came in, it looks like. I'm not sure who it is, but whoever just came in, if you want to type your name, that's cool. I can't see on the screen, but I always like to have uh, see who's watching. So if you just tuned in, I'll give a quick view of the painting. You just tuned out, that's okay. Paint it out, you know. Anyway, we saw the painting, so Grace, thank you again. Um, hopefully you'll tune in next time I do this. I'm gonna be trying to do this maybe at least, you know, three times a week, four times a week. Don't have set times, it's just whenever I can do it. Um, yeah, so thanks again. Uh, all I can say is I wish nothing but best of health to you and your families. And remember, stay grounded and centered during these crazy times. Find something, whatever it is, that keeps you centered, right? For me, it's doing this kind of stuff, painting, talking to you guys, creating. Creativity keeps
keeps me grounded. And without being grounded and focused, and if we're paying attention to all the bombardment of the news and media around us, you know, we just do crazy things up here. So, you know, for me personally, my game plan is to stay away from as much of, the, of that as possible. Focus on what's really important to me, family and health, and to do more of the things I love doing, which is, you know, it's keep playing over here. Do my painting? <laughs> We're almost over. <laughs> which for me is painting, right? That's my creative outlet. Um, find your key ingredients that make you, you. Okay? And uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to be a little deep tonight, but uh, I'm positive. I, you gotta be positive. You, need, you know, just be positive. And share the love. So thank you again. You guys are awesome. Leave comments. Share the video. It's gonna be up on Facebook when I'm done. Um, please share it to your friends so they can watch. I'd like to keep, I'd like to grow this and get more viewers. We just have a nice community going here. I think that would be incredible. Um, yeah. And if you want to do a paint along with me or create along with me, you need, there are no skills required. All I ask is you show up to me with a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and we'll uh, create something together. I think that would be awesome. If you like that idea, leave it, say yes in the comments. And uh, we'll make that happen, okay? So you guys are the best. Keep being you. And as I always like to say, peace and live creatively. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Also, good night for my friends over here, Mr. Bob Ross, Mr. Jim Henson, and Mr. Rogers Lee. Okay? We'll talk more about them in the future. Bye, guys. Have a good night. I appreciate this opportunity. I like to end my broadcast with a cheesy smile, so... See ya.